I get to see who the closed minded people are. And I get to see the people who actually love me. And there are going to be people who know me my entire life who are going to disappear off my page behind this. And that's cool too, because I needed to know who those people were. Not everybody is meant to go on this journey called life with you. But I'm not going to stop being who I am, who I have always been, who I've been since diapers. Just because it makes somebody else nervous that somebody like me can actually exist. If you can believe in everything else, you can either believe that I am who I am or you can turn your back on it and pray that nothing ever happens where you need somebody like me to be able to be your guide. Because there are people out here who are out here because they're here to help guide others. And somewhere I have a guide. And that guy has a guy like there's somebody who is helping all of us, whether you are letting the ancestors lead you, whatever the case may be, we all have a guide. And we all need each other. At some point, we all need each other. So before you go out and judge the next person or before you go out and start talking out the side of your neck to an actual child, stop and think about the fact that that child may be the very child who has to help lead you out of danger at some point. Like you never know who you're talking to. And the crazy thing about it is that is something that coming up in church was always taught that, you know, you never know who it is that was sent to guide or who it is that was sent to lead. Like you never know. And we are so busy turning up our noses at other people because they're not just like us. I will never understand the mentality of if you're not just like me, you're not good enough. And for years, that's basically what that felt like. Like, well, because I was born the way I was and I have the gifts that I have, I'm not just like the rest of you. So I'm apparently not good enough to exist. And what was extra crazy, and I know I'm going on and on and it seems like I'm yelling, but I get real hyped up about the situation because it really, back in the day, it upset me. It hurt my feelings. It pissed me off. But what really gets me is these are the same people who were like, you know, they're, they had certain gifts as ministers. There were certain things that they could see and there were certain things that the Lord would tell them. So now you're saying that the Lord can tell you things, but me, absolutely not. If I'm being told things is evil, when you get told things, it's the Lord. We could be getting told the same thing. But you're told is from the Lord because you're a minister and my told is evil because I'm a child. That don't make no sense. Whatever happened to and a child will leave them. Whatever happened to out of the mouths of babes. Like make it make sense. <laughs> I felt like, you know, these things were only said to me to shut me up. Because nobody really either could explain why I was the way I was or they didn't want to explain why I was the way I was. And now, mind you, I'm not bashing the people I came up with absolutely adored my church family. And like I said, most of them were actually related to me and there were ministers there that I was very close to and very cool with and were family. But in this instance, the three people that I was speaking to, and I know there's some people listening to this who grew up with me. No, I'm not telling who it was. The three people who I spoke to and my mother knows who they are, um, made it seem like. My story was just, I don't know, far-fetched or there was something wrong with me. And the crazy thing is, it's not like they took time, sat and listened to me and was like, you know what, let's pray about it. Let's, let's really think about it. Let, no, one of these people actually came out their mouths and told somebody that I was actually probably one of the sweetest children they had ever met. That I was meant for greatness. 
I was evil about two weeks ago when I talked to you. And that's why I know it was a way to shut me up and shut down what I was going through so that I would not continue to go and talk about it or I wouldn't continue to tell people what I saw because they didn't understand it. And one of the things that I've noticed about people, you when you go to people who don't quite understand something, the only way they know how to deal with it is to shut it down. I honestly believe that the three people I spoke to had absolutely no clue why I was the way I was. They had no idea how I was as accurate as, as I was as a child. And in order for them to shut down the situation because they could not explain it and they did not understand it was to just say, well, you know, it is something evil and just let it go and just shut the, shut the situation completely down because they didn't get it. They didn't understand it. And I even had somebody go as far as I told this story to one other person. I had somebody go as far as to tell me maybe they were jealous because your gift was so strong as a child. Because she was like, I've come across people who have told me that they see things and it's because, you know, they were ministers and the Lord told them and then come to find out they really were just kind of winging it. She was like, maybe they were jealous of your gift. I was like, I don't know what it is. Um... I would like to believe that three grown men were not jealous of a 12 year old girl, but you know, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Like I said, I honestly believe it was because they did not understand and therefore they could not explain why I was the way I was. So the easiest thing to do was to just shut down the entire conversation because that way you never have to explain it to me. And you would never have to think any deeper. You wouldn't have to do any research into it and try to figure it out in order to give me an answer that would make sense to me at the age of 12. And then I found out uh, later on that apparently my grandmother on my mama's side had the same gift, but she used to cover it up and hide it. What my granny would do is she would say things like, oh, you know, there's a bus that comes through here every day at three o'clock. You may not want to step off the porch right now, because if you step off the porch at two fifty nine, when that bus comes around the corner, it tends to shake a little bit and it may hit you. Instead of just saying, I saw you step off this porch and a bus was going to hit you. She would come up with a different way to get you to do what she needed you to do without her having to actually explain it. Or my mom said she would remember my grandmother would say things with great accuracy to her. Like, you know, oh, well, when you go down to that corner, uh, there's going to be a man standing there who is going to pull out a red handkerchief and he's going to pop you right in the face with that red handkerchief. And, you know, then when it happens, it's like, mama, how did you know that was going to happen? Oh, well, I've seen him pop other children in the past. No, you've never seen him do it. Man probably just bought that red handkerchief this morning. He usually has a, a blue one. He doesn't have a red one. He's never around kids. He doesn't even like kids. But for some reason, he popped her on that day and you knew it was going to happen. But she always found a way to get around ever actually explaining and my mom finally figured it out when she got a little bit older which backed my grandmother into a corner to have to speak on it but she only spoke on it once and as you listen to me talk about my life you will understand my grandmother typically didn't speak on much of anything um unless she was talking to my aunt and uncle she did not like to talk about her life where she came from the people she knew none of that I personally always thought that my grandmother popped up out of a cabbage patch had no siblings no family and no parents because that is the way she portrayed her life as if there was nobody in the world but her. And she finally got my grandmother to even fess up to it. And then she told her not to ever speak on it again. And as far as she was concerned, this conversation never happened. And I'm like, but why? Well, after coming up through what I came up through, I understand why she was like that. Because I'm sure as a kid, she was like me blabbing all over the place about death and birth. And folks were like, oh. Yeah, we're going to have to throw this one into a fire pit if she don't stop talking. So, as I said before, watch the things you say to children because they take it a certain type of way. And you don't realize that by you shutting them down that young and by you making them feel like they're crazy or they're evil, you actually set them up to become neurotic adults <laughs> like you put them in a position where they they doubt themselves 
you you put them in a position where they're constantly on edge and wondering is today the day that I'm going to accidentally say something and they're going to come at me with the pitchforks like you put them in a really bad place um and I would go so far as to even say situations like that is what causes anxiety in people like myself as adults like I'm in a group right now where everybody is gifted and everybody suffers from anxiety because they can't say anything about their gifts outside of their groups and small groups of people who are like them because other people look at them like they're insane or talk to them crazy. Don't do that. We're not out here saying that we created the earth by hand by ourselves and we are, we're the ones that made people and cars. And We're not throwing out far-fetched stories. We're just telling you that this is who we are. This is what we see. This is what life has been like. The next thing out your mouth should not be, oh, well, that's just evil. We're going to go ahead and dunk you in this water right here. Maybe the next thing is, you know what? I don't quite understand why you're like that, but maybe we can look into it together. Or if you understand it, try to explain it without using words like evil, witch, and burn at the stake. You know, You have to, we all have to do a lot better about showing more compassion, especially to children. Now, my mama used to always say you have to be compassionate towards children because they're the ones who pick your nursing home. (laughs) Um, But I always say you have to be compassionate towards these children because if not, you're the reason why as they get older, they have no sense of self. They have no self-worth and I see it all the time. I can go down my timeline and I can find at least two or three people who have no faith in themselves whatsoever. And if you take the time to talk to them, they've been gifted all of their lives with one thing or another, whether it was the ability to write music, sing, uh, whatever the case may be, they, they see dead people, whatever the case may be. They are gifted in some area and that area was not nurtured. And in a lot of case, in a lot of uh, cases, it was actually shut down or frowned upon. We don't have time for music in this house. We don't have time for you seeing dead folks in this house. Like you can't shut down a child's gift, no matter what it is. It, you know, I know I'm talking about things that are considered supernatural, but which I actually hate that term. Um, <laughs> but I've actually seen kids even shut down for having great musical ability and it's like you tie their hands and blind them because if if this is who I am as a person, if music is who I, it is my thing, this is who I am as a person. That's like, um, the man, he is a DJ. Whenever things are going wrong for him, he will actually just go and get on his turntables and he's got his mixer and everything all set up. And he'll just go and he'll mix and put together music and he just kind of gets lost in his music and he turns it up loud and he's just in there mixing and doing his thing. And it's a beautiful thing to hear, but it is when he's in that mode, it's not for us. He's doing that for him. That is his therapy. His music is his therapy. And for some of us, our, our art or our gift is our therapy. It's where we find our peace. It, it's the very thing that gets us up out of bed every morning. And when you tell it to other people and they're like, oh, that's crazy. Oh, that's evil. Oh, that's a waste of time. You, you don't just shoot down the gift. You shoot down the person. And if you're really out here trying to do better for society and do better uh, with people and trying to make connections with people. You can't shoot down their gifts because you're shooting down who they are. I don't see how people don't get that. You can't be out here talking about, I'm trying to save a soul and bring you away from the dark side. And then when I tell you who I really am, you push me right back into the dark side, probably deeper into the deep end of the pool. You just, you can't do that. You will win no one over in that manner. And trust me, I lost a lot of faith 
in a lot of things coming up because of things I was told and things that I saw 